What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. Today I just want to ask you a very, very, very simple question. What kind of life do you want to live? Very simple. What kind of life do you want to live? What do you envision for life, right? Because I think that a lot of us, especially in the United States, and there are other countries that's worse, is that we we grow up, right? They tell us in school, hey, you know what I'm saying? Pursue your dreams. You can be anything you want. You can do anything you want. You know, um, you know, just work hard and you know, be good. Drink your milk. You know, and you'll be fine, right? And then by the time we get to high school, right? We start taking a whole bunch of tests, and we're just on a four-year mad scramble to meet all the federal and state and local requirements in order to be considered an adult and considered, you know, having been completed of education, the basic free education. Most of us, at least when I was growing up, we actually did our work because we had no choice because we didn't have Google. We didn't even have, we didn't even have Google. We had to actually go study for our stuff, right? And then Google came along and then the kids didn't have to do nothing but Google it, right? They just Google it, it was that easy. Instead of going to the library, they Googled it. Right, they were able to complete their work faster and you know, they were able to gather more information but retain less. Right? Now we done advanced to Chat GPT to make Google look like you got like getting up and going to the library. Chat GPT give you the all the answers, right? But it we're we're moving into a society where even the education that we get is is obsolete and useless because most most stuff we learn, a simple program can do all of that better than we can, more effectively, longer without paying it right so we're moving into a different like world right now right and in this world i'm not sure if everybody's paying attention because we all got gripes and issues because there's effects that's happening with this new world that's taking place we are going to a post-labor economy right a post-labor economy what that means is soon enough corporations which have been trying to figure out how to produce more and more stuff and provide more and more service without paying people, right? Right, they have all sorts of different in this capitalistic Western system we live in. We got all these different methods to do that, right? Paying human beings to do the work, then paying them low wages, right? Then when that group of people want more money, replace that group that wants more money with another group of people that wants less less money. That's how, that's what happened in, in Europe when the, when the Irish was building them railroads Right, and forming unions, and those Irish people was forming them unions, trying to get, trying to create some sort of power, so that they can negotiate with the corporations that were giving them the contracts to get jobs. Right, back in the West, back back when everybody was scrambling for jobs, unions were ways for organized groups of people to unite, right, so they could have some kind of power to fight against the massive corporations. That were, treat, that were treating any of its employees like slaves, like they do now, like they've been doing then, like the transatlantic slave trade. That was all corporations and their business models. All right, let's take let's take all the, the emotions out of it. That's what it was, right? So just corporations have to continually come up with different business models to compete in a world where there are ever-growing businesses that's coming up with other creative business models to, to create money through their products and services. Right, so we like American citizens are a product and service that is being produced by corporations that facilitate our learning at least up to 12 years in order to make us pliable to be able to do the basics of what it is that these corporations need us to do to working within their apparatus within their corporations so that when we become new modern slaves called employees, they will be modern masters called employers, and you know, all rules, same rules apply, just less whipping in some cases depending on what country you're in. Less whippings, right? But that's basically how it's been. But you see the corporation no longer need the liability of humans because they've been working on this for a while. They need that slave back. What they need is that rate of return they used to get when they were when they had a field full of 100 black people they weren't paying. And all they had to do was feed them maintenance on the biological robot that was running their business, right? So now they've come up with a solution. Not only robots, 
Not only are robots a solution to slave labor that they need in order to make the highest rate of return, but an AI is, is simply a, 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 you got software and hardware. They're taking care of the hardware, which is the robots. The software is going to be the AI. And when they put those two together, there's no need for you. You're not necessary, right? So what's going to happen is the world is going to start complaining about something else. When humankind no longer are necessary to work, even your unions that we use, the union, I hope you guys recognize why unions are so important. It's the only mechanism which the, a person can join a gang that's strong enough and organized enough that can finance itself to fight for rights against the corporations that hire us en masse and formulate the policies and the rules and regulations that force us to have to work for these corporations and live in the products that they own and rent and use all the utility services that they own in order for us to survive legally without going to jail. Think about it, right? Slaves, we are serfs via taxes and the land. That's why you can't never really own nothing in America. You're always, you've, well, we've always been slaves. It's just how they make us believe we slaves. What do they tell you? The best, the best slave is one that don't know he's slave. So if there's think tanks out there, there's think tanks whose job it is to make sure you understand that you are not a slave, that you are free. They will tell you to be free, freedom, free, free, liberty, individualism. They will let you know in, in pushing your head that you are free so that you can believe that you are free, so that you can be a good slave, all right? But those old, old tactics are no longer necessary because we have robots. We don't have to not abuse the restaurants. You don't need to come out with DEI requirements for the robot. You don't need to come out with... Robots don't need health and welfare. Robots don't need days off. Robots don't get sick. They don't need uh, FMLA. They don't need to form unions. They don't need a lunch break. They don't need a smoke break. They don't need 15 minute break, a 30 minute break, a half hour break. They don't need to negotiate for none of that. They don't need nothing. They don't need to work in shifts unless they need to charge up, which they got that part covered too. So it could be one robot, one shift covering three man's jobs no argument, no workplace violence, no liability. If I'm a corporation, I'd be stupid not to go that route. And if I think, if I think I'm going to be bold enough to say, you know what, I'm gonna keep my, I'm gonna keep my corporation all humans. I'm gonna keep my corporation all humans because I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna phrase myself. I wanna, I wanna, uh, I wanna make myself look like the only human company. Yeah, because it looks cool. I'm gonna differentiate myself from the future that's coming. I want to be different from those corporations that's going to be using all this artificial technology to provide goods and services for the company. What's going to happen is they're going to have to compete with companies that don't have those moral issues. And that means that their products and services are going to be much, much cheaper. That means a person trying to use human services for their business, their products are going to be much more expensive. And you know what you're going to do as the end user consumer when you walk into the store? You're going to be like, yeah. That one cost twenty dollars. That one cost five dollars. Same, same stuff. Quality in the five dollar ones is better than the quality in the in the in the twenty dollar one. Somehow, stitches are perfect on the on the on the twenty dollar one. On, on the five dollar one, guess what? We're gonna get as consumers who don't like to spend money, <laughs> the cheaper one. And as that happens, the corporations you try to keep it real, they try to keep it natural, they try to keep it organic. They're gonna fall to the wayside, or they're gonna have to adapt. Meaning they're gonna have to fire their people in order to compete with all other corporations that's able to produce services and products at a lower wage, right? So that means all these, a lot of more mom and pop shops are gonna shut down because they can't compete. More restaurants are gonna shut down because they can't compete. More, everybody gonna start getting fired because they can't compete with the robots that do a more efficient, better, safer job. People are already scared of people nowadays anyway. Nobody even come outside. So people are already starting to feel safer interacting with inorganic objects than they are with humans. Because you never know if a human knocking on your door to do something, he may actually do something weird because humans are weird. But when the robot comes, he's just going to do what he came to do. It's going to give a sense of, of safety. And the corporation is going to start advertising how much safer that is. They're also going to start advertising how much safer um, robots and artificial general intelligence, which will be here very soon, makes better decisions, unbiased decisions in us. They're going to make us comfortable with allowing machines to take make more and more critical decisions in us and we're not gonna have to make certain decisions in the future. That's why That's why um, reparations is never gonna happen. You talking about giving a concentrated, you think a group of white people who are going extinct right now, 
who are in the real world who are actively trying to figure out how to force their women to have babies that's actively trying to figure out how to get their boys to continue to get into the fields necessary to maintain intellectual superiority over everybody else that's having a hard time trying to get their boys to stop doing fentanyl and drugs and murdering themselves so they can go have babies they're having a hard time holding on to the institutions that they themselves uh, built off the backs of everybody else Everything that they own right now, you see, you got these people gaslighting you like Dr. Umar Johnson and them gaslighting you that white people going to take over. See, he got this thing where he says that when a white person marries a black person, all that white wealth, all that, that black wealth goes to them white people. And they act like that's been the mode of operation of the day. And that's why a black person, a white person is like they traitors to their community or whatever that he says. That weird shit. He says the non-married guy who goes around making baby mamas. And break your hearts, you know, for the last 15, 20 years, he's trying to give relationship advice to, to, to other people. That, that never that only make no sense to me. You know, we, we don't walk it like he talking, as he says. He does a lot of talking, but I don't see no walking, right? Every time you see Omar, he's standing somewhere, running his mouth. He ain't doing nowhere or walking nowhere or with nobody, for real, for real, right? So, but in actuality, on the white side, every time white people wake up, they see browner and browner people within the institution they created for white people. Every time, time brown people wake up, they see some black guy doing something with their daughter. Every time some white male, uh, some white male CEO of some corporation, some company turn around, his goddamn daughter, his granddaughter was some black guy that ain't and, and, and manly in love. And you can and, and he got to deal with the fact that his white liberated, rich, spoiled daughter, granddaughter chooses to be with a black boy in high school, a black boy in college, having babies with black children. Guess where that wealth gonna go? So y'all talking the wrong thing. We got a few dumbass basketball players that can't read, but they can, they six foot four, so they can put the ball inside the hoop, right? Yeah, we got that. We got a lot of dumb basketball players that, 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 that just, they just really good at sports, but they're not good at anything else. And yes, they're around a bunch of white, a white females that's got a target on their back because of the environment they're in. They go into these colleges, they're in these universities, around all these white people. You, oh, you got all these damn white girls willing to do all manners of white girl stuff to these young, impressionable, freaking testosterone-filled boys. You are to expect that they're gonna indulge in the pleasures that 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 the white man used to indulge with them with them African Africans on them on them slave plantations. But this time it's voluntary, at least, right? It's that type of shit. You got a lot of white CEOs of these of, of corporations in this country, and no matter what they do, their corporations will be passed along to somebody that look like me. They will be. At some point, every institution on this planet will be given to a black person. Every institution, every institution in Japan is gonna be given to a black person at some point, given a couple hundred years. Every institution in, the Europe, in Europe is gonna be given to a black person. They can't help it. Their children can't help it. Every institution in the white Western world in Australia and in America is going to be given to some goddamn black person. Watch, mock my goddamn words. Because we got enough testosterone filled males that don't mind stepping, stepping his dipstick in any goddamn thing. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of us. Umar talk about it's shameful. Listen, the reason he say there's soccer lost some it ain't no goddamn self hate for some young testosterone filled black boy to stip his dipstick in some other female from another race. Are you crazy? It's his. It's called. It's called nature. That's what the hell it's called. He's supposed to be a psychologist. He's supposed to be intelligent in the brain, but he says so much shit that no, no doctor would say, unless they're freaking crazy, right? Men are men. Men will do anything, right? And black men are highly desirable in the real world by lots of women all over the world. And still, eighty percent of us marry black women and deal with just black women. Twenty percent of us are gonna dip our stick, our dipstick, in his own mouth. You know, I, hey, look, hey, 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 hey. I was a Marine. Let me tell you something. I was a testosterone field, United States Marine Corps infantryman, special ops, looking good with my dress blues. You couldn't tell me that. Do you know what, man? Look, 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 look. Passport rolls ain't got nothing on me, boy. Uh, yo, y'all understand? I was a shit. Well, look, I done, I done, I done sampled. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never had no problems like these Revenge of the Nerds. I ain't never had no problem. I mean, I did get out of the military and get fat for like a couple years. But even then, I ain't had no problems. Because even fat people can get game. You can be fat, bald, and ugly and still book women if you got a personality. Shit. A personality go a long goddamn way. 
right? So these guys are idiots. But look, we're not getting reparations because that money needs to be allocated to another bigger issue that's looming over the way. It's called universal basic income because we're going to be in a post economic, we're going to be in a post labor economy. That post labor economy is coming, guys. That shit is on its way. If you're not realizing, corporations don't need your ass. They are firing everybody left and right. They are firing. They don't need you. Corporations are in the business of making money. They're not in the business of making you feel good. Them feel good commercials are just to get you to get off their back. That's it. That's it. They white people are not gonna give the black people a trillion dollars while they're going extinct. They rather spend that trillion dollars to invest in things like artificial womb technology so that they can take their eggs and, and, and have a womb outside of a baby and then if the white women ain't gonna have that baby they can get a machine to do it which would be great because there are a lot of people who are suffering from uh, from infertility issues who can use some technology like that so i mean that's good technology is coming it's already in development it's just gonna take a while for the fda to approve it but there are people in the future having a baby organically is gonna be something that's not even it's gonna be a problem we're gonna buy, we're about to have people who have a whole new set of issues we're gonna have we're gonna have people fighting fighting to keep robots from being in positions of power and authority what about we're about to have a uh, new a new type of uh, rebel a new type of anarchy all right it's the raging against the machine legitimately we about to, all that shit that we manifest we manifest in our movies is about to come to light when we humanity is about to have an issue with robotics especially when robot robotics start to take control a certain type of government control mechanisms which will happen because it saves money it's probably more efficient it's definitely less biased it does take the racism out but at the same time it takes the humanity out of the decisions which uh we yet to know whether that's good or bad we don't know if that's good or bad we don't know we can't say one way or another because we've never been in them type in that type of situation we've made movies about it dystopian and utopian futures based off that type of stuff but it's ultimately up to us how we want to manage this technology, you know, how we want to go in the future. I do believe that there is a bright future for all of us. We are about to, um, we are about to transcend into into something. I, I I can't even explain it to you, but there's a trans, there's a massive trend transcending that's going to happen here in the near future within our lifetime. That everybody's going to be forced to make a decision, and it's going to be bigger than anything that we think we're thinking about right now. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be hard for people to really wrap their minds around it. And I'm not going to get into much of that, but. We got things coming in the pipeline in the future, and it's gonna we're gonna have some good things happen, but we're gonna go through uh, some serious rough times in between there because life is about to change fundamentally for this planet. So we need to be having futuristic arguments and futuristic things for like solutions for that. Like so, how do you how do you want your life to live? Like what how do you envision in the future? What 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 do you need to be happy? Right? Because in America, it tells you you need to work all day to make a bunch of money to buy a bunch of stuff. Right, and that's how we our psyche is, right? Our psyche is make a bunch of money because a bunch of money equates to a good life. But as we see, there's people who have lots of money that don't have a good life. There's people who are have millionaires and but yet they still stressing themselves out to make more money. There's people that have everything they can possibly buy in the world and they're still stressing themselves out with their life, utilizing time that they can't get back to make more money for what? To create things that you can't take with you when you die Or when you transition to the other side When you finish with this physical reality And you go back home to your real life On the spiritual side You can't take nothing physical with you here All that shit's left here This playground we leave all this shit here The only thing we take with us is our memories And, and, and our experiences And how many experiences are we collecting While we're just toiling away at a job Trying to make money so we can buy more stuff That we can't take with us when we should be creating a life to where we can have as many experiences as possible so we can take those with us when we leave this this dream and go back home to life, right? And we can go talk to all of our loved ones about, hey, that shit was amazing when we was down there Earth. Shit was sucked for half of it, but I learned so much, right? You know, so I don't think we as Americans, as Western society, even value the true purpose of life, the true function of life, the true meaning of even being here because we've all, we, we've, We've manufactured a society that doesn't value actual living on this earth. It only values 99% of the world working so that 1% of the world can still sit back in the house and dream about going to space and dream about technology and dream about innovation because they got nothing else to do because they done bought the rest of the world. They enslaved everybody. They, have, they literally cannot accomplish anything else so that spurs them to, to try to accomplish something else. 
new and innovative. You think Elon Musk is a genius? Elon Musk is a rich billionaire with Asperger's syndrome that's just smart enough to know that he can buy all the smart people and buy all the smart companies to make himself look smart. You think Elon Musk is the architect behind behind uh, the Bohr tunnel? No. You think he's the architect, intellect, the mind behind behind uh, Tesla? No. You think he's the architect and mind behind behind uh, SpaceX? No. You think he's just this mega genius that just happened to be racist? No. His racism shows that his mental capacity is limited to where he couldn't even he couldn't do none of this shit. He's not smart enough, but he's rich enough because he got that African money in his bank account. That's when that's in the real world. But he's smart enough to know about the future, and he has Asperger's syndrome, so he shouldn't be out talking to a bunch of people anyway, representing normalcy, because he ain't normal, right? And that's true. Look up Asperger's syndrome and just see other people who are not billionaires, who are not spoon-fed billionaires who got the same thing as him, and see how they they interact and how they're they're received in society when they're uh, you know interacting with, re with regular folks. You see, and you'll notice that Elon Musk acts just like them. He's just a rich billionaire version that nobody can really do nothing to because he got all the money in the world, right? So we have to start thinking differently. Like, so that's why I'm thinking. Like, really, you want you want to be able to feed your family, you want to be able to enjoy and not stress out, like you're on a vacation. Let's say you go on a. Most people have, you know, what do you do? You go on vacation, right? What do you do? You go to some Caribbean island where black. You go somewhere with some black people, some brown people are, right? You go, you buy yourself a, a villa, right? Some some mid to modern like little space ain't got much right but it's in a nice location where the sun's out and life is simple right some place where you can, you don't have to get a five star meal you can go get you a, a nice fresh organic meal fresh meal from the locals can't get no fresher fresh organic juice squeeze freshly squeezed you got that fresh sun on you you just chilling there's nothing nowhere to be nothing to do and that is that is how we vacation decompress from life well, what if you can have that every day? You can have that in Africa because of the way the way life works. You can have that in the Caribbean. You can have that in places where black people live. Imagine, imagine setting yourself up and spending your 20s setting your life up in another country, whether it be somewhere in the Caribbean or Africa, right? Or South America somewhere where the real estate, is, where his land is, is cheap and you can go buy you a piece of land, right? It don't matter how big it is. It could be the size of the land that you got. Let's say if you got any in America. It can be an acre. It can be a quarter acre. It can be a thousand acres. It can be a hundred acres. You can buy yourself a piece of land that you own. That you own. Not the government own. Not you paying taxes. But you act. There's places around this world you can own land. Right? Where you can own land. Where it's, it's truly yours. It's like legitimately 100%. God, it's yours. You pay for it. yours. Right? And you can build you a nice house that's better than anything you've ever built or bought in America like 90% cheaper everything you want walls actually made out of concrete imagine that right or any manner of material you want to use right and when you finish building it there's no mortgage it's yours and then imagine digging a hole and having your own source of well and water it's yours imagine that so that water belongs to you imagine spending money and setting up a solar panel system that will power your refrigerator your TV your freezer, any amount, all your plugs, and every little your Xbox, your PlayStation, your, make sure you got cable. Nowadays, you just get a smart TV, you got the world on in your palm, so you ain't worried about if you can get, if you need cable network hook up. You just need internet. The whole world got internet nowadays, anywhere you go. Hell, I'll be in the middle of the rural area, in the middle of Afghanistan, I, I, I mean, not Afghanistan, sorry, uh, uh, Nigeria, and I got 5G, and I got T-Mobile. I just go over there with my T-Mobile phone and they switch to the, net, the network, right? So think about it. you can have you can create your vacation life and then own the entire vacation life. And then how much money would you need to operate your life after that? What more do you need? You got beautiful land that belongs to you. You got privacy that 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 will never be taken away from you. You got water, you got electric, you got you don't need gas, right? You got everything you need that you build. You can spend your 20s doing that instead of and, and, and it'll cost you about as much. Listen to me, it costs you about as much. As the average 20 year old spends going to the club, buying bottles, buying tables, buying outfits and clothes all weekend for the, for your entire 10 years that you want to have your your fun trying to trying to trying to uh, have excitement and distract yourself from the life that you live every day. That's why people go out and party to distract themselves from the life that they live every day. 
That's why people go and they do drugs to distract themselves from the life they live every day because of the environment, this capitalistic environment that all these people are trying to tell you is so great. Look how it's treating the people and look how people are reacting to it and trying to escape it in the real world, right? And there are other systems that's worse than ours. The system itself is cool. It's just how we're operating is bad. And we're about to just have to need a new operating system in the future. And we need to start thinking about that because we are, in fact, humans. Africans, we are humans. We, we, we have to complain and acknowledge the issues that we have and the things that uh, that we are owed by these people. And we can't let that down, but we got to be thinking about the future and what kind of life you want to live. And you need to set your grandkids, your families up for that. If not, there's a lot of people that's going to be left in the dust because this future that's on its way, before we get to this great future that's going to advance human, human kind, there's going to be some bad shit. And if you guys are still sending your children out here to make $100,000 worth of debt to get these degrees that don't, it's not worth the paper that they, they written on, then you're setting your children up for failure and you're setting your whole self up for failure. It's time for a dramatic change in your mind. Africa's calling you home. The Caribbean is calling you home because that's ours too. It's ours now. All right. All places where black people are now is ours. All right. So wherever we are, go there to where black people are. Set yourself up in the best conditions possible to make you and your family thrive and be free from the white Western influence of their capitalistic system that's crushing the world right now. Everybody's protesting around the world through this capitalistic white Western system that everybody, all these conservatives tout so much is so great and that we need to hold on to and they're fighting for. Anyway, tell me what you think in the comment section. Just Afro Think Tank, learn some. Teach some. I'm out.